The bizarre side jobs of Shaq during the NBA. Now Shaq, I feel like Shaq has reached that level where just like everybody knows him and it's not for the thing. Like it, it is for the thing, right? It's for the NBA. But at the same time, people will even know him outside of that. Like I have a feeling there's a new generation of kids that know Shaq just from commercials alone. He's one of those people. Shaq does the most side quests ever. I'll be seeing him with TikTokers randomly out of nowhere. It's like him and Drake, cause Drake uh, talks to a lot of like creators and stuff. Him and Drake, like they just be doing random side quests. Anyways, let's let's see what a uh, goofy Shaq does on the sides. Shaquille O'Neal has officially completed the campaign of life and is now doing side quests. Hey, I like that the campaign of life. When do y'all think my campaign of life will be finished? You got you got to achieve some high caliber things. You probably got to reach the point where you can get anything you want. Obviously, right? I'm definitely not at that point. As you can see in my background, I'm basically living in poverty. Poverty. You got to be able to go wherever you want. Probably private plane. I'm in side quest after that. Ball player, actor, doctor, investor. Shaq's a doctor? Why is this giving me like Johnny Sin vibes? Hold on, why? <laughs> why is he giving me like? I can't look at this image the same. Ever since that Johnny Sin's image, I I'm telling y'all, I cannot look at that image of doctors the same. DJ, police officer. Shaq was. Always oh, I saw the DJ thing. Yeah, I saw. I saw the DJ thing before. He's a big fan of side. Wait, he's a police officer? Yes. He had. Yo, imagine being on the run from like. Shaq. It's, it's truly over at that point. I just give up. I'm putting my hands up fully. At his own video game and released four studio albums before he had a championship ring. At Louisiana State University, Shaq was a two-time All-American and a two-time SEC Player of the Year. Damn. The seven-foot-one, 330-pound beast got drafted as the number one <laughs> overall pick to the Orlando Magic in 1992, which led to an way. amazing first season, earning him Rookie of the Year. He became known for his powerful dunks that would sometimes bring down the entire backboard. This amazing height and power combination revolutionized the game and helped Shaq dominate the league. His real dominance came when he joined the Los Angeles Lakers in 1996 alongside Kobe Bryant. The two were an unstoppable force that won three consecutive goes, goes. NBA championships. You don't even gotta watch the NBA to know that. In 2000, 2001, and 2002. Then Shaq secured his fourth in 2006 with the Miami Heat. 15 NBA All-Star selections, four Damn. NBA championships, three Damn. NBA Finals MVPs, two Damn. NBA scoring titles and Damn. one hall of fame induction. Yo, slow down slow Shaq down man complete. damn all these accolades and what accolades do you guys have let's be real i know i i, I gotta ask myself the question too uh my accolades is probably uh my elementary school graduation my middle school graduation my high school graduation yeah that's about it i'm a loser i'm a tommy nfg twitch mod <laughs> Yeah, that's facts. That'll get you that'll get you far in life. You can write that down on your resume for real. They did the main story. Now it's time to look through all of the other side jobs Shaq had outside of the NBA, starting with him becoming an orchestra conductor. Stay hydrated. Huh? During his time at the Boston Celtics, the PR team approached Shaq with the idea of conducting the Boston Props Orchestra, a world famous orchestra founded back in 1885. This wasn't just for show either. Shaq attended a full rehearsal and learned the ropes of a professional conductor. Okay, here's my question about you, 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 you know. Hey there, Tommy NFG here. Just a little reminder to make sure to subscribe because only about 30% of you guys watching this are actually subscribed. Also tune into the Twitch streams every once in a while. You know, we have a lot of fun there. There's a lot of fun that goes on there. So um, I'm ending it right here. Let's get back to the video. This wasn't just for show either. Wait, what does this mean? Shaq attended a full- When they move their finger like this, how does that even help orchestrate? Like it keeps tempo? Huh? Isn't that temperature? Never mind rehearsal and learn the ropes of a professional conductor. Shaq would take the baton and lead the orchestra in three songs, with the final song being We Are the Champions by Queen, aiming to rally hey, the fans in the audience around the team the in the coming champion. season. Also, Shaq became the tallest conductor in the Boston Props history. Damn. Speaking of music, Shaq has bars. Did you know Shaq released four studio albums and two compilation albums? I know about his music In 1992, career. Shaquille would make an appearance on Arsenio Hall's late night talk show, sharing the stage with his favorite rapper at the time. Oh yeah, you know, you know, hold up, let me just mute the music. You know what they were singing right here. Hold on, let me do a reenactment of what they, what, this was, this was in the 90s, right? Or 80s? The songs were something like this. Hip, hip. Hip hip hop to the hippity hop 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 hip hip hop your feet hop hop hippity hop hop all right let me stop i'm trolling sharing the stage with his favorite rapper at the time foo schnickens the performance caught the bad stage name bad stage name everybody can write down right now if you're gonna pick any name to to be a famous person don't 
pick Foo Schnickens. Foo Schnickens. Performance caught the attention of Jive Records, who reached out to O'Neill with an impressive offer. $10 million for three albums. While Shaq never intended to pursue a serious career as a rapper, he saw the opportunity as a chance to collaborate with his hip-hop idols. His mm, debut album, Shaq Diesel, quickly gained traction, reaching the 25th spot on the Billboard Hot 200 charts and selling over 1 million copies, officially making it's it platinum? certified platinum. Damn. Shaq's music ventures also featured appearances from legendary artists like Biggie Smalls, Ice Cube, Nas, and even what? Michael Jackson. Now Shaq considered- Man, man, no, now I'm jealous. Met the king of pop? Artists like Biggie Smalls- What am Small I doing with my life? Look at me. I'm reacting to a video about Shaq's accolades of him meeting Michael Jackson. Look at me. Smalls, Ice Cube, Nas, and even Michael Jackson. Now Shaq considers his rap career more of a hobby than a serious project. I wish I made $10 million from my favorite hobby. But he isn't just talented on the mic, <laughs> he can also dance. Look at how flawlessly he can move that huge body. Nah, he's hitting that though. Hey. <laughs> After that little break dance, we got to it's see- It's actually really good. He's like 330 pounds full of muscle. Even like bodybuilders probably can't do that type of movement. Even more of his moves at the That's 2009 the NBA, NBA All-Star Game alongside the professional dance group, the Jabberwockies. The big Shaq is himself, Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> you thought his music shit. career was done? Wrong. Shaq is quite literally the biggest DJ in the world. Oh my god, just look at that arm. That arm is the size of my leg. DJ Diesel is a very active bass music DJ who performs at festivals all summer. Messing around with turntables was a hobby that dates back to Diesel's teenage years. He never did any performances, only for some friends. O'Neill was interested. What type of performance is that? Funny. Diesel's teenage years. He never did any performances, only for. You call this a performance? What is this? Some friends. O'Neill was introduced to. Why does that dude have his underwear off? No, and I'm not even gonna question it. Moral World in 2014 by his then girlfriend Letitia. I went to a concert five years ago, Tomorrow World, and I saw half a million people just jamming. And it mm. gave me something that I've been missing since I retired. It gave me that adrenaline boost. And when the beats mm. drop, you see a half a million people doing this. Shaq wanted that adrenaline rush for Wait, himself. Wait, is that, is that the dupe step? That's the dupe step, right? See, me, I, I don't know about that. The thing is, I don't really like parties, but, like, I, I don't think I could ever go to, like, a rave. I don't, I've never been to one. I haven't really been to a rave. Elf. He got connected with a booking agency who hired him Same as thing. a celebrity cool. DJ, and he took offense to that, assuming he didn't know what he was doing. After a few club appearances, he made them an offer. Give me one chance to rock a crowd, 100,000. If I don't do well, fire. 100,000? I mean, I'll never do it again. This landed him a spot at Lost. 100,000? Imagine 100,000 being like your first time artist or DJ, and that's your that's how much you're getting paid. Six figures. Lands in 2018, where he absolutely shocked the crowd. From there, he became a go-to for major festivals. Damn. Tomorrowland, Lollapalooza, Hard Summer. He even became known oh, wait, as the Dubstep Dad. I could have chose any style of music. I like bass music. I'm seven foot, 350. I consider myself hard. When I put it on the basketball court, I was hard. Yeah, never. I like the hard drops. I like that. the kids that bang their heads on rail. I like mosh pits. And the coolest part about his DJ career is that he does it all for free. That's right. It's truly just a hobby for him. But make no mistake. What? Jack is no dummy when it comes to getting paid. Because he isn't doing all those commercials for free. And neither am I. Oh, yeah. The commer when you think of Shaq endorsing a brand, what comes to mind? Gold Bond, Papa John's, Burger King, Pepsi, Wheaties, Lyft. What the fuck? Gold Bond, Papa John's. Was this man Burger just holding King, a soda machine? Y'all know how much those weigh? 400 to 900 pounds empty. See, Wheaties, Lyft, Radio Shack, Epson Printer, Age Everywhere. of Beer, Nintendo I'm, DS. I wouldn't be surprised if Shaq was on a commercial on my stream. Yes, Tamadachi Life. Street. The list goes on and on as Shaq has endorsed well over Everywhere. 100 brands in his life. But the one I think of first is Icy Hot. And the reason mm. behind it is pretty funny. I had a thigh bruise and the Lakers trainer put some Icy Hot on my thighs. And I was having a great game, but my boys were starting to get real hot. And then I'm running and they're getting too hot. I had to call a timeout and tell the trainer, hey man, my balls are on fire. After that incident, Shaq got in touch with Icy Hot. and He put Icy Hot on his balls? Ooh, for y'all that have ever tried Icy Hot, damn, oh, no, that's sick. 
Things took off from there. They worked out a sweet deal where Shaq not only starred in their commercials, but also became a part owner of the company. But that's not the first time Shaq liked a product so much he became an owner of the company. In fact, he's done this over 50 times. He's a partial owner of 155 Five Guys Burger restaurants, 17 Annie Ann's Five Pretzel guys? restaurants, 150 car okay, wash, on, that's kind of mid. 40 24-hour fitness centers, what? A shopping center, a movie theater, and several Las Vegas the nightclubs. Shack my house? But his relationship with the general insurance is the closest to his heart. Oh, I love the general. Hold on, what, what, what is the slogan? If you need some time and a great deal of time, call on the general and save some time. Loki, a classic commercial. Loki. You see, back in 1989, Shaq was broke. He spent all of his money on a $1,500 used Bronco, but couldn't drive off the lot nice. until he had insurance. Actually, like Shaq it. went to every major insurer. Okay, you don't need insurance to drive technically i'm kidding this is where we legally abide and follow all things at nfg youtube twitch wherever this is i'm um, streaming for them until he came across a little building that said the general who gave him quality insurance at an affordable price this he was a customer goat. from that day until nearly 30 the general years later real he became a brand with that ambassador and part owner of the company i know what i am stop at the general i didn't brands. need to hear from you he even I know made what his I am. own products Ever heard of Soda Shack? Teaming up with Arizona Beverages, huh? Shack would launch his own line of low-calorie, all-natural cream soda called Soda Shack, releasing four flavors, vanilla, blueberry, strawberry, and orange. Oh, I might have to try these on stream, damn. Sporting a low cost, as most Arizona brand drinks do, and featuring a cutout of Shack's face, many were excited for their release, but some were critical. Sure like the soda came in a 23 and a half ounce can. Some, some soda On the nutritional shack, facts label, shack. it revealed that each can has three servings, and it is sweetened with cane sugar. With 90 calories per oh, serving. Oh wait, no, no, uh, um, high fructose corn syrup? I might actually try that Each can contained a total of 270 calories and packed a whopping 72 grams of sugar. Even mm. through all the criticism seven years after being discontinued, Soda Shack still has many fans hoping for a return. But this wasn't even his first sugary treat. Mr. Big was the name of his 1995 candy bar. I'm sorry, but why, why was the first thing I thought is like, what if this B was an N? This just looks The wild. standard bar is made of a layered vanilla wafer coated in caramel. Oh, that actually looks nice. Ew, what's that white stuff? Is, is that mold? Is that mold? Peanuts and rice crisps that? while being smothered in a chocolate coating. The bar is the length of two standard like size bars around eight inches long, which is Connected. also the same size as Shaq's. Did you know he also made... <laughs> what did he say? No, nah, that was funny. That was that, that, that was funny. I like I like to see that comedic a comedic aspect to Patrick Casey's video. In his own video game, Shaq Fu is a 2D fighting game similar to early Mortal Kombat. I'm pretty sure I know about this. It was like rated the worst game ever, if I'm not wrong. Or Street Fighter games, starring Shaq as the main character. This looked that bad. EA and released to gaming systems such as the Sega Genesis and Super NES on October 28th, 1994. The plot of the game is that Shaq walks into a dojo while heading to a charity basketball game in Japan. After after speaking to a martial arts master, Shaq goes to another dimension, where he must rescue a young boy named Nezu from an evil mummy. If you don't think this is very interesting, a lot of people would agree with you. Shaq Fu in recent years has been regarded as one of the- <laughs> I just said that, I just said that. See, I know my shit, I know my shit. Let's keep Worst going. video games of all time by many game critics. Nintendo Power had 12 staff members vote in a list for the 10 worst games of all time, which oh, placed nah. Shaq Fu at the third worst place on their list. Oh, Yet nah. still, the game got a reboot. I'm not gonna lie, wait, when was this? What year was this? Nintendo Power, so what year was this? Does anybody know? 98? Oh yeah, you know what they was thinking. You know what they was thinking. This is the 90s, bro. You know, you know that 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 racism was at a peak. It was at a peak. In a list, they saw they saw Shaq's big black archetype, and they were like, "Nah, can't have this." But the same guy, no, 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 I'm joking though. The game was trash, right? For the 10 worst games of all time, which placed Shaq Fu at the third worst place on their list. Yet still, the game got a reboot in 2018 for PlayStation 4. Shaq wow. Fu: A Legend Reborn, which was actually received very well by the gaming community. The beautiful graphics and cutscenes had us convinced that Shaq could actually beat people up in real life. Oh wait, he can. He proved that to us with multiple appearances in the what? ring. What? Shaq has always Why been I a never seen Shaq in the WWE? Of professional wrestling, and he's had some epic moments in the ring across different promotions. Back in 1994, he made an appearance on World Championship Wrestling, where he presented the title belt to the winner of the WCW mm, World. Look at this. This was definitely the peak. The lights was gleaming. Look at the look at the photo. Look at the way it just looks. It's, I, and you know this isn't even edited because they didn't have editing back then. This is like peak WWE. Heavyweight Championship between Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. Then in 2009, he took on the role of guest host for WWE's Monday Night Raw, in which mm. he would find himself 
himself getting into a scuffle with the legendary wrestler, The Big Show, creating a feud that lasted for almost a year. But he wasn't done there. In 2016, he surprised everyone by participating in his first legitimate match. He entered as a celebrity competitor in the Battle Royale at WrestleMania 32, eliminating Damian Sando, and had another confrontation with Big Show before being eliminated. Okay, see, this is why I can never do this. Eliminating Damian Sando, and had another confrontation with Big Show. Look at this, like, dicks to butts. What is he, why is he bending Shaq over like that? Why does he look like that behind Shaq? Exactly why I can never do this. <sighs> I, I'm pretty secure in, in my masculinity masculinity and you know what, what what i believe in and what i like but i can never do this bro go before being eliminated himself and most recently for the promotion aew in 2021 shaq teamed up with jade cargill to take on boss boss what AEW was that in 2021 okay this is this <laughs> Yo, really thinking about it, like, the WWE was really zesty, looking at it. I mean, the move's at least done. Like, any homophobic person that watched the WWE, you can't even say you're homophobic. You watch this shit. Can't lie. Shaq teamed up with Jade Cargill to take on Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet. During the match, things got it's crazy when men Cody wrestling. Rhodes took exactly. him out with a flying crossbody, Ooh. sending Shaq. Shaq crashing through two tables ringside. Shaq's acting was so good, he could have fooled us into thinking he was a full-time wrestler. Oh, and speaking of acting, O'Neal has spent some time on the big screen as well. His first major film role was in the movie Kazam, where he played a 5,000-year-old genie who emerges from a magical boombox to grant a- Oh my god, wait! That's where the meme comes from? Go to movie, I never watched this, but I know the meme. Wait, yeah, hold on, let me pull up the meme. And then there's this right here. And then there's this. <sighs> That's where it comes from? magical boombox to grant a young boy three wishes and honestly the film sucked but he still managed huh? to pocket a cool seven a million dollars for his time pretty good month if you ask me most of his acting career beyond that wasn't really acting because he often just played himself as you can imagine it's hard to cast a seven foot superhuman as just another right. character he had guest appearances on Curb Your Enthusiasm, My Wife and Kids, and The Parkers he also had fun cameo roles in movies such as Freddy Got Fingered, Jack and Jill and the Parkers. He also had fun cameo roles in movies such as Freddy Got Fingered. Jack and Jill and Scary Movie 4. But that's not all. Shaq even lent his voice to animated versions of him. Why they do Shaq like that? Why they do Shaq like that? Why they do my, uh, why they do my brother Shaq like that? Oh jeez. And who the fuck is this supposed to be? Like Shaq just skeleton? Shaq skeleton? What is that build? This is like a One Piece build. Literally Blackbeard. Blackbeard from One Piece. <laughs> Looking like Blackbeard from One Piece. Himself on several occasions and taking voice acting roles in multiple animated films like The Lego Movie. But he isn't limited to just guest appearances and cameos. He also has headlined a few of his own reality TV shows. Shaq Life is still an ongoing series that provides an inside look into his family life. But the more interesting like reality ones TV. were... Shaq's Big Challenge that Joe and Shaq Versus. Shaq's Big Challenge documented his efforts to help Another six to severely movie? obese middle school aged children lose weight and gain a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, no, they need to add this back into the schools now. Go ahead and cancel me. Add this in every single public school in America now. You see what they was doing for kids? I swear, like, they, no, they were really, they were really putting this on for people. I need that. Twisted, make a pe petition in your school for them to add that. They was really putting on though. I feel like they were at least somewhat trying, right? Now they don't care. And Shaq versus was basically him Imagine challenging you other workout, professional just a perfect athletes person. at their own sports, just a which was person. viewed by multiple millions of people Swimming? every episode. For some reason, watching a seven-foot man do anything besides play basketball was entertaining. Now, it's mm. pretty common for an NBA player to have their own signature shoe, but O'Neal made a shocking decision that let us know exactly what kind of person he truly is. With an amazing first season in the NBA underway, Shaq caught the eye of Reebok and secured a significant multi-year deal with them worth 15, 15 million dollars. This partnership led to the creation of two original shoes, with the first one being the Shaq Attack, released during his rookie year in 1992. Over time, the Shaq Attack would release four more iterations. In 1995, would would the icon... Okay. 
If I see you walking around with the Shaq zebra shoes, you're getting made fun of. And I'm not even in the shoe game. I don't even look at all that. I really don't care. I wear Crocs about 99% of the time. But like, come on, what is this? What What is this? Iconic Shaq Gnosis was introduced, marking another milestone in Shaq's collaboration with Reebok. His eight-figure empire was building until he got a reality check from a fan. While leaving the arena after a game, a lady approached Shaq complaining about the price of his car. Oh, I know Reebok about the story. I actually know about the story. Shoes. I had a Reebok deal, 40 for five. And I'm leaving the arena one day and this lady, is, she's ripping me into her. You mother us. No, charging these babies all this money for the shoes so i had like a two thousand in my pocket i was like ma'am i don't make the prices here you go and she smacked the money in my hand why don't you mother make a shoe that's affordable and i thought about it and i was like you know what she's right that day Shaq cut ties with reebok and started his brand he went to his favorite store walmart and they made a deal to make his shoes as affordable as possible the price ranged from as low as $12 to around $30. Since then, they've sold over four- See, that's like, bro, that's the impact of people. Cause imagine that lady wasn't there. That just shows like, things like this show you the intent. I love seeing celebrities that are actually wholesome. Like I think Keanu Reeves does the same thing. There's hella people we can name. There's like a bunch of celebrities like this and it's good to see cause the, the other half is 10 times, a hundred times worse. Like the bad side, we always see, but like it's good to see the wholesome people. 400 million pairs. Instead of trying to create the most hype shoe to compete with Jordan, he did the opposite. Because of this, some people even tried to make fun of Shaq. And unfortunately, the kids that wore his sneakers would oftentimes get picked on as well. Yeah, I can't I can't lie. I can't lie. I remember this. Uh I don't know much about shoes, but like my brother was really into it and he told me just don't get Shaqs. He told me like don't get them. Kids were getting fucking roasted. They'd be like, ah, oh, that nigga has shot. Like, you get roasted like that. I went to a pretty fucking ghetto school, so, like, they will be on your ass for anything. I made fun of people for wearing shacks. <laughs> uh, see, look, look at the society we've cultivated. We cultivate as a society where if anybody's wearing something somewhat affordable, right? If something is made affordable, they're made fun of. That's so sad. Well, on the basis that We're Shaq wasn't cool Nike. enough or iconic enough to compete with Jordans. But when you think about it, he did a really great thing for kids all around the world who struggled financially yeah, really but needed a decent pair of basketball shoes. It wasn't worth it, though. I'm sorry, it wasn't worth it. You, you better off going to shoes school bare feet better off way better off a ton of money his impressive net worth of over 400 million dollars shows that he's made all the right moves from the start he's been a very savvy investor buying in early to companies like google and apple back in the late 90s wow. however his real estate portfolio is perhaps the most impressive and no it's not because he owns a bunch of mansions in the hills he has taken on a number of different real estate development projects to provide affordable housing for those in need he built the largest 80 20 mixed income project in new jersey which is where 20% of the apartments are considered affordable. In Colorado, he was a part of a deal that purchased 1,407 subsidized Section 8 housing units with what? the intent to remodel and offer them for below the market rate. My goal is to eventually own $1 billion in affordable housing. He basically wants- No, that's actually so- Not only is that like a really good thing to do, but that's also smart because if this plan does go through, then like the pricing is gonna negate it. It's gonna negate it because more people are gonna have the housing. He's gonna be able to make the money back on it, right? He's gonna be able to do it. It's kind of like a quantity money thing, how they have like Black Friday sales and like they sell more that day than any other day. So like they're they're making more money. It's kind of like that. To do the same thing he did with sneakers, the not in own a few flashy and expensive properties, but rather thousands of affordable this is something units I would do. to help as many people as possible. Rather than buying like, what do YouTubers buy? I don't know. Attitude towards the community it's explains his strong interest in law enforcement. Did you know that Shaq is a police officer in multiple states? In 2002, Shaquille attended the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Cars, Reserve yeah, no, Academy, I'm not a, I'm not trying really to become down. a SWAT team member. The specific requirements for the specialized unit included the ability to scale a rope 100 feet in the air. O'Neal had completed the conditioning tests, the sit-ups, the push-ups, had endured the verbal assaults and discipline. Oh my God. Plenary penalty. Look at his man. Look at look at his back. Look at his back is built. But he was just too heavy to accomplish the rope climb. He tried it 12 times. The last one he reached 75 feet in the air before plummeting to the ground. Mm. Despite his failure, he became a reserve officer with the Los Angeles Port Police, receiving sufficient training to carry a gun and ride as a second man in a port. This is genuinely a side quest. Like <laughs> becoming a police officer. That's genuinely a side quest. Being like a multi-rich celebrity. Police car with senior officer. Imagine being pulled over, and after that, the Shaq opens it and he's like, "Uh, hey, you're gonna put." And the person's like, "Oh my God, Shaq, Shaq!" 
Like that's just that's gonna be everybody's reaction. But it didn't stop there. When he got traded he to the Heat, he worked as a reserve officer in Miami from 2003 to 2005. His annual salary, one dollar. However, a leak huh? of his Miami Beach police questionnaire definitely raised a few problems. The reason being, he treated it like a joke. Under special skills he possessed, he said, laptop computer, binoculars, master of surveillance. For primary occupation, he put oh, yeah, Grand Theft serious. Auto Investigations. He's now, as someone serious. who would be considered legally able to carry a gun and serve the community, you would think they wouldn't allow jokes on the application. However, Shaq never abused his power, so I guess it's okay. In 2005, he was honored with the title of U.S. Deputy Marshal. In 2013, Shaq was officially sworn in as a part-time Golden Beach, Florida police officer. In 2015, he was sworn in as a reserve police officer at the Doral, Florida Police Department. Damn, so they got a chance, like, there's a chance where Shaq, like, if, if something happens, I guess, and they call all the police officers somewhere, there's a chance you'll see fucking Shaq running around with, like, a gun or something in SWAT. Armor? Oh, hell no. Nah. 2016, Shaquille O'Neal was sworn in Shaq as a than Clayton County, of cops? Georgia Sheriff's deputy. In 2019, he was sworn in as How? an auxiliary deputy with the Broward County, Florida Sheriff's Department. How? In 2020, he oh, was named Broward a County's special ghetto, reserve right? deputy in St. Martin Parish, Louisiana. Just about every city he visits, he taps in with the local PD to see what's going on. And I'm sure by now you're probably wondering, since he's a police officer in all these different counties, has he ever done any actual what? police work? Although he does have some Spoilers stories of, him of kicking pulling over doors people? and finding dead bodies, Shaq seems to be more of a just-in-case type officer. However, he does have one pretty good traffic stop story. Darius Miles, former small forward for the Los Angeles Clippers, was one day running late for practice. As he was flying down the 405, he looked in the rear view and saw flashing lights. It was an unmarked police truck with tinted windows. I knew I was speeding, so I pull over and I roll the window down. And I'm reaching over into the glove compartment to get my papers. Then I hear this big booming voice. Where you going, boy? I turn to look out the window and I can't even see this dude's face. He's so big. Then he bends nah, down. Imagine that like in a, a you, you just see a silhouette of somebody in a cop car pull up to your car. <sighs> They're towering over your entire car. They're like half its size. And it looks in the window, big dumbass grin on his face. It's Shaq. I'm like, yo, I'm going to practice. You made me late. He taps the side of my truck, turns around and says, don't worry about it. I'll pay your fine. Just holler at me. Shaq's got one of those old school police lights that you put on the hood of your car like you see on cops. He gets in, laughing <laughs> his ass off, waving at me. As if there wasn't anything more impressive to add to his resume, the college dropout became a doctor. Shaq made a promise to his mom that he would eventually go back and complete his bachelor's degree since mm. he pursued his NBA dreams. True to his word, Shaq fulfilled that promise in the year 2000 and graduated with a BA. Bro, it's crazy how much, bro, it's crazy how much of an emphasis there is on, um, like, college, for example. Because, like, I swear, bro. At least coming from from uh, my aspect, y'all know I made a, the new video about foreign parents. Some parents are just not satisfied. You could literally be a multimillionaire actor, Shaq, whatever. If you don't have like a degree or something, they don't care. They literally don't care. And it's just like sad, bro. His mom was probably like begging him to get the degree and this nigga's making like a hundred million dollars in commercials and general studies with a minor in political studies. While this accomplishment would satisfy most, Shaq isn't like most. Just five years later, O'Neill pursued further education. He earned online a Master mm. of Business Administration degree through a the master's? University of Phoenix, saying, it's just something to have on my resume for when I get back into reality. Someday I might have to put down a basketball and have a regular nine to five like everybody else. All right, bro, stop lying, stop lying. This is low-key pander, I'm not gonna lie. I can't even say anything like this because I, I make videos, so I can't even say like I can't even say anything. I'm, I'm still offending. I'm still offended. <sighs> Come on, Shaq. You know you don't. You know you're never gonna be on a nine to five. Imagine seeing, <laughs> imagine seeing Shaq at like your office job in the future or something. Just sitting there like typing, typing up fucking reports and stuff. That would actually be funny though. Towards the end of his playing career, he began to work on a doctorate at Barry University, eventually completing the program and receiving a Doctor of Education degree in Human Resource Damn. Development, making him formally Dr. Shaquille O'Neal. So the big question that everybody wants to know, what will Shaq do next? Well, probably a little bit of everything. Man, Shaq got a... You know what Shaq hasn't done? Collab with Tommy NFG on a stream! And I are not right, guys? Aren't, aren't I right, guys? He, he needs to collab with Tommy NFG on a stream. He needs to collab with, or a video, a regular video. That's what Shaq hasn't done. <sighs> Y'all think Shaq knows me? I think Shaq knows me. Shaq probably knows me. Just think. Okay, it seems like, it seems like you guys mostly agree, right? Okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of agrees. A lot, a lot of agreements, yeah. Shaq knows me. Superstar Tommy NFG on Twitch.